Okay, good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee. I hope you can hear me okay. I have got a bit of a cold, so we'll try not to uh, to infect anybody. Sorry. Um, I have received apologies from Councillor Steve Doyle, who was going to um, support from a portfolio point of view, and Councillor Roy Rogers will be a little bit late. Are there any other uh, apologies from anyone? No, okay. So item two is the minutes of previous meetings. We've got two um, sets of minutes, uh, the 26th of September and the 11th of October. I'm quite content to, uh, to have them moved on block. Um, if we've got a mover. Absolutely. Thank you. Did, did I say the 10th? You said the 11th. It's... Okay. Um, it's the tenth. It is the tenth. It is the tenth. Sorry. And Michelle. More than happy to second. Excellent. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Wonderful. Thank you. Um, it's the eleventh. It is the eleventh. It sorry. is the eleventh. Sorry. I will check okay. why there's a discrepancy on that. Are we all content if it's the 11th or the 10th? Brilliant. Thank, thank you. Um, a good spot. Um, item three is declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations of interest? No? Ex excellent. Um, item four is an update from me. Um, I have no general updates other than things that will be covered within the uh, with the items and work plan discussions so we'll move on to item 5 which is the infrastructure funding statement 2021-22 and we've got Richard Powell here to to present thank you Richard thank you chair uh, yeah first apologies for the lateness of the report arriving it was um due to um, the finance team checking the figures. Uh, the, the second recommendation, as you'll see, says to publish in, at the end after Cabinet, uh, subject to the final confirmation of those figures because they're just checking to do with interest accrued and things. So I'll come to that in a minute. But so basically what we've got is the infrastructure funding statement that is uh, the council's required to publish one of these annually. It covers the, the this one covers the period uh, April 2021 to the end of March 2022. And it's mostly factual and just covers uh, information about income and uh, allocation and expenditure of planning obligations through Section 106 agreements and um, through sale income. Um, so the, re the report's attached uh, uh, Appendix A, so I won't go through the details of it, but I'll take any questions afterwards if you've got any. Um, the only thing to add is that uh, prior to it going to uh, cabinet will just be needing to add a little bit in about the uh, SIL neighbourhood portion spending which came uh, through previously a few, uh, I can't remember exactly when, but a few meetings ago and the, it was being set set out the process for spending the proportion of the SIL income that's to go to the neighbourhood that, that would normally go to parishes but being unparished we have to spend it on the community uh, projects. So a process was set up before whereby um, members would be al allowed to uh, apply for funding from the, that pot uh, and then the decisions would be uh, made by cabinet. So we had two applications for funding, uh, one from Councillor Pritchard for a, um, a footpath uh, or Ashby Road, I think it's... Yeah, Anchor Valley, yeah, the footpath Anchor Valley. So it's, that's 10,000 to uh, go to the county council to fund the work to do that. And the other one came from Councillor Maycock for some open space works, and that was another 10,000. So that, uh, those have been considered by Cabinet, and as I understand it, they've approved those. So that'll just have to be ratified in the Cabinet meeting. So we'll just add that into this report to get that, uh, to make sure that's all covered at that point. Um, I think that's it in terms of this one. So if anybody's got any questions, happy to take any questions on the, the statement. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Richard. Uh, questions or comments from committee? 
Michelle. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, you, you'll be very surprised to hear me say this. It's a statement of fact. It is what it is. Um, there is nothing in there that, um, to me, kind of brings any kind of concerns other than the fact that I suppose longer term, as the less, the, the, well, the fewer properties are built within the boundary, there will be less opportunity to kind of get sill and income, which I think we need to kind of look at from a longer term perspective because that is a way of us getting things done using developers but otherwise it is a statement of that so yeah thank you thanks thanks michelle any other questions or comments well that's that's nice and easy we've got we've got two uh, two recommendations to to go to cabinet one is regeneration projects within tamworth remain the priority for spending the strategic element of sill and to the draft infrastructure funding statement appendix a be approved for publication on the council's website subject to confirmation of the final figures um so we can move those on block if if if, if people wish michelle more than happy to move e those recommendations thanks oh, okay thank you all those in favor wonderful thank you very much and uh, and thank you richard thanks for your work put in Okay, item six is responses to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. Um, I attended Cabinet on the 20th of October, referenced the uh, net zero carbon recommendations that we, we spoke about, um, and Cabinet agreed that the action plan would be prepared by the 31st of December 2024. Um, any questions or comments on that? Good. Um, item seven, our consideration of matters referred to infrastructure safety and growth from Cabinet or Council, and there's been none at this time. Um, item eight is the forward plan. Um, I've had a quick look through. I don't think there's, there's anything new that we need to consider that we're not already considering. Questions and comments from members. Excellent. This this, this meeting is is going untypically fast. Um, item nine: our working group updates, and we have a couple of um, active working groups. And I'm going to kick off with facilities for HGV drivers and uh, Councillor Ben Price, who uh, I believe has got some updates. Yeah, thanks, Chair. So um, we have finally met um, for the first time this year, uh, which is uh, good news. Um, but on the back of that and a previous conversation that we've had today, um, one of the members that, that met on that um, subcommittee is no longer part of the committee. Um, so I would like to ask yourself and the committee if um, either to propose a new member for that or if the committee is happy and yourself, I, I will speak to Sarah and see if she's happy to continue on that. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, um, I'm quite content if you want uh, if if you want to contact Sarah if she's happy to to uh, to uh, be working on that item. I, okay, I think I'll, it's, I will uh, do that. Um, I think so it's quite mature of us to be able to invite members from other other committees on. Thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll I'll speak to Sarah then, and um, and if she doesn't wish to be on it, I'll contact yourself and uh, and we'll sort something out. Um, but yeah, so we we had a, um, an initial meeting um, where we discussed. Um, the the sort of the, the base brief that we sort of had when we initially put this on the, on the working group, um, and we we've, we've decided there is it, it is worth looking into deeper, um, and and there was a, a few work streams that we we wanted to look at, um, so we sort of split that down into um, three uh, bite-sized chunks for one of a, a better phrase, um, and. And the the idea being, we'll we'll look at one at each of the next three um, working group meetings that we that we do. Um, so the the first uh, the first thing that we wanted to look at was the um, service station provisions um, because uh, the service station is due to be re relocated um, soon because of HS two. 
Um, so we wanted to look at if there was anything that we could do working with Highways England and the County Council with regards to provisions that can be provided at the new service station when that's built. Um, we also wanted to look at if there was any potential locations within the borough that could be used um, to provide um, shower facilities, toilets, uh, etc. Because one of the problems that, that came up was um, littering um, of um, urine in, in pot bottles um, be around the industrial estates um, because there's no facilities. Um, and, a sec and, and the third one, we wanted to look at um, some, um, we wanted to do some market research with some businesses um, around the industrial estates in Tamworth, the, the, the three sort of main industrial estates that we've got, um, and, and see what, f what they actually provide for the people that are coming into their business um, in, in the HGVs. Uh, if anything, and then whether there was any provisions already on any of them in the states, um, and if there wasn't, if we could, if we could provide any um, provisions, um, and that's that's pretty much where we're at, at the minute. Um, when we finished that last meeting, um, we I asked uh, each of us to visit each of the industrial estates and look at if there was actually any issues on there, if we could identify any provisions that were already there, um, and then we'll we'll report back at the at the next meeting once we've had an update ourselves. Thank, thanks, Ben. That sounds uh, sounds like you've done quite a bit of work there, actually. And uh, I think those, though, each of those work streams are, uh, you know, are are um, absolutely valid, really. So yeah, that's that's encouraging, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you haven't forgotten anything. I thought just for um, kind of um, clarity as well. Um, ben mentioned the first. Um, item being about the potential, re well, the, the planned relocation of the services due to HS2. Just put it on record as it's already in my declarations. I work for HS2, so anything to do with HS2, I would admit myself from that. I just wanted to put that on record. Thank you. Th thanks, thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I mean, I, unless other other people on the committee have got any comments on that, I'm. I'm certainly yeah. Richard. No, it's, it sounds absolutely fantastic. The work stream you, you, you've outlined, and I'm fully supportive of it. Um, just one thing I would request you mentioned working with the county council. Can I also get you to work with our partners across the border in Warwickshire County Council? Um, um, and if you need some potential contacts, I'm sure I'm, uh, as, the county, as a county councillor, I can put you in contact with the highways team. who will have contacts within the Warwickshire County Council team because it's not just an issue that's going to affect us with the technical services being in Warwickshire as they are now. So uh, if you need any assistance with that one, I don't want to join the working group, but if I can provide any assistance on that one, I happily will. Thank, thanks, Richard, for that. Um, yeah, I think, I think they're, I'd crack on. I guess is what I would, what I would say. Um, okay, uh, the next working group we've got is the review of the policy relating to migrant travelling community. Um, I think we agreed that this would be a cross-party working group with health and wellbeing. We haven't met yet. However, we have had some information um, with regard to. Um, policies from County Council and I've had recent meetings with officers to establish when TBC will be looking to create policy from, from, from that and uh, so that, that is ongoing and I've been in contact with the Chair of Health and Wellbeing and we'll, we'll be speaking later this week. Um, I think probably with a, with a view to as seeing something um, maybe in the new year is what I would suggest. Michelle. Thank you. I mean, yeah, just a bit of a comment on um, that. I think the fact we're kind of probably three and a half to four months away of seeing the return trip of yeah. the travelling community, we know that people will, based on previous years, be back. So anything that we can do in advance of that so we don't have the same issues coming up again even though we can't change the fact that the traveling community are going to probably come into Tamworth if we're prepared in terms of the information that's available and the procedures and if there is any amendments that prior to that date it would be really 
I think, beneficial for <coughs> us as individuals, but also residents as well. So that's uh, so uh, anything just to kind of th please thanks, crack Michelle. on. I, I agree, and I, I've been encouraged from my from my um, conversations with officers that there is uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, and it's kind of finding a the right appropriate time when we can we can feed in in a more constructive manner rather than um, an obstructive manner, I guess. Um, so so I'm 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 comfortable that. While it's, we're not actively got officers coming to see us, there's a lot of work going on in the background. So, uh, any quest other questions, comment, John? Uh, just really, um, just to inform everybody, I don't know if you know, but um, Sheree certainly does, but um, the gates at Reney Road have been attacked again this time. They've been seriously destroyed. And uh, from what I understand, they're not capable of being repaired. So this leads us to believe, obviously, what the purpose of this is, is open to debate and um, supposition. Why someone or some people are keep continuously destroying these gates. But um, I think it's obviously something that's going to continue. Um, and I would suggest that we need to look at putting something a bit more robust in place that uh, is going to take a bit more effort to destroy because we can't keep forking out money to replace and repair these gates. Um, and if they're not repaired, if these barriers are not put back, we will be invaded uh, again. Uh, I think nothing's so sure as that. So I've spoken with... Um, with, with councillors, with uh, officers this morning, and asked for this to be done. Um, basically, I think whatever it takes, um, because um, no matter what we spend now, we're going to be spending more and more and more if we continue having these uh, disgraceful attacks. I would hope that local residents will be um, aware of the situation and will report anything they see or anyone they see damaging this, because these people are going to have to take some serious equipment with them. It's not, <laughs> it's got to be angle grinders and really big pieces of, uh, of kit to destroy these gates. Um, somebody must know something, and I would encourage them to contact the police and pass on any information as soon as possible, because this is simply intolerable. We can't keep having this malicious damage inflicting of Oh, upon us and of course the financial aspect is that the people of town must continually have to fork out to pay for the repair of these things so um, it's got to be stopped and we've got to find a way of preventing these barriers from being destroyed again thank you thanks, thanks John uh, any other questions or comments on that okay um, so the next working group is the transport integration, which is later on on the agenda, and obviously Paul's been heading up on that, and um, we'll 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 look at that and eagerly await some updates later. Um, item ten is our committee work plan. Um, the next meeting we have is the eighteenth of January, scheduled meeting. Uh, and that's going to include a future High Street Fund quarterly update and also the dual stream recycling service update currently. And um, you never know, it may well include something else if something else comes comes along we need to, uh, we need to look at. Uh, any questions or comments on the work plan? Good, good. Okay, so item 11 is the exclusion of the press and public um, for reasons of confidential information. And I will move the motion that in accordance with the provision of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England, regulations 2012 and section 100A, part four of the Local Government Act 1972, Press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business 
on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12a to the act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Uh, seek seconder on that. Thank you, Ben. Um, all those in favour? Thank you. Uh, so thanks for the public. Uh, we have no public in attendance, but maybe watching. Um, thank you very much. And Jodie, if you can shut down the recording. Thank you.